Fasting will get people healed where other methods have failed. Holy Ghost of God in the earth today. Holy Glad Ghost you could join us God today. We've been talking about fasting over the past several weeks. In fact, I believe this is number five in the series. That's a lot of information, but also it's a lot of things being put into you that can help you, especially when you do, and I say when you do, not if you do, when you do decide to fast and to go on to you know, uh, maybe a three-day or a five-day or a ten-day fast or even on beyond that. These things are really good to feed on because it builds your faith and it gives you the will and the strength to continue where you might not have been able to just on your own. Because you're not on your own. You're with other people who are doing this. I'm a disciple of fasting. I've seen in the in the Word that this is what we should be doing in this day and therefore... I partake in it, and I'm getting blessed by it, So, and you will too. Anyway, let's look today at 3rd John, not the Gospel of John, but 3rd John, very close to the book of Revelation. 3rd John, and then verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things. So here's John speaking on behalf of God because it's in our Bible. That he wishes above all things. I mean, so that means there's a whole bunch of other things that God has a wish for you for. But above that is that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So, it's God's will, it's God's wish, it's God's desire that you prosper and be in health. I mean, it's no good for you just to prosper and die young. God wants you to prosper and be in health. So what we're going to study here a little bit today is God's will for you to be healthy. God's will for you to be in health. Now, this is in the Bible. This is part of the good news that I'm called to preach. I have to preach the good news. I have to preach what the Bible says. God has methods whereby you can be healthy, and a lot of it isn't being preached because people are either ignorant, mostly, or afraid of it, or don't even want to. A lot of people won't preach healing, for instance. Well, I'm a healing preacher. Well, you got to preach healing for people to get healed. Do you understand that? You got to preach healing for people to get healed. But there's a part of healing that right now isn't involved in a lot of preaching because they just want to stay away from it. Either they don't go there or they're not disciples of it. But this is in the Word too. Let's continue on here. Let's look at Malachi. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. I am the Lord, I change not. So, here's God. He's saying, it's my will that you be in health. So it's God's will that you be in health. Here in the Old Testament it says, I am the Lord, I change not. So it must have been his will back then. It's his will now that you be in health. Let's go back even further. Let's look at the book of Genesis. You think God made sick people in the book of Genesis so the doctors could live well, have the nicest houses, drive the best cars, making money off people's sicknesses and illnesses. No, God didn't make sickness. Genesis chapter 1, and let's look at verse 31. Let's say this is God made everything. He said, and God saw that everything that he had made, right? So he'd been making things, making things, making things, making things. And then he looked, he looked at it, he goes, he saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Very good. That's even, that's even better than good. So everything God made was very good. And behold, I am the Lord, I change not. And it's still his will that you be in health. It was always God's will for people to be healed and in health. And he doesn't change from it. 
I don't care who you are. I don't care what religion you're in. If you're a human being that God created, it's his will for you to be healthy and in health. And he made you very good. And that very good carries a lot of weight because he built within you certain capacities to get rid of sickness and disease. Now we know how things happened, right? Remember that Adam and Eve, they sinned because the devil tricked them. And then he, so really it was the devil who brought sickness, brought death into the earth. And we can just look at that real quick. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So how did death enter into the world? And the devil knew this. This is why he was trying to get uh, Adam and Eve to disobey God, which was sin. And then they, he was able to bring into the earth through that vehicle what? Death. Well, any sickness, if it's carried to its full end result, is death. Sickness is incipient death, meaning in the end, that thing will kill you. So here we have death coming into the earth by the vehicle of sin. And with death came corruption. With death came contamination. Satan was able to contaminate the earth and put uh, sickness and disease and toxins and bad things. And I find it curious that it was through the vehicle of disobedience. And yet when we're called to fast, which is what this message is about, by the way, fasting is a very strong part of your will towards obedience. You have to obey God to fast. So it came in through disobedience. Sickness came in through disobedience. And most sicknesses leave through obedience. Isn't it a wonderful thing? So God's will, I hope I've established this, it is God's will to heal everybody. It's God's will to heal you. It's God's will to heal me. It's God's will to heal your neighbor. It's God's will to heal everybody because that's who God is. That's what he does. That's how he made you was to be healed. What you do with your healed body is up to you. Right? Even Jesus, he healed people and said, sin no more, lest a worse thing come on you. So they were in sin at the time and he healed them. And he said, don't sin anymore or something bad's going to, more worse is going to come on you. Are you getting this? So it wasn't about people being so holy that they get healed. It's just God's will for everybody to be healed. So it's God's will for everybody to be healed, not just Christians. Name one Christian in Jesus' day that got healed. There were no Christians in Jesus' day. There were no Christians back when Micah wrote those words. You understand? It's that God's will isn't just to heal Christians, it's to heal people. And not just everyone who can get to that place of faith. You see, you got to understand, I am a healing preacher. I preach healing and health. I preach that you got to believe. You believe that by Jesus' stripes you were healed and you confess that over yourself. I believe that. I believe in laying hands on the sick and they recover. I do that. I've seen results by that. I'm a healing preacher. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit moving. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I've participated in that. But it doesn't happen all the time. And you might go, why? Why does it happen all the time? You see people that rely on just these things, the, the gifts of healings, and they go to a meeting, and somehow that gift, that particular gift wasn't in operation at the time, and a lot of people will have a specific gift for, for a specific kind of disease. I remember Dr. Dufresne used to have a, a gift of healing that worked on cancer. Well, you went to the meeting and you didn't have cancer, but you had something else. Well, it didn't, you left and you didn't get healed, but the person with cancer got healed. And I've heard it time and time again, and maybe you have too, that I went to the healing meeting and the healing power was there and God didn't heal me. 
So it's not God's will to heal me. I've heard this way too much from people who should know better. But you know what? They've never heard this message and they've never, they've never gone farther into maybe the root causes of why they didn't get healed. They've never come to the place that it's God's will to heal them and maybe they had something to do with it. Hmm. God told me to tell you this today. Fasting will get people healed. Not just Christians, not just word of faith people, not just uh, people that are in the right meeting at the right time. Fasting will get people. Fasting will get people healed where other methods have failed, including faith and confession, where faith and confession has seemingly failed. It never fails. Uh, you failed it. Or gifts of the Spirit might have failed because either wasn't a, or the right gift of the Spirit moving or you didn't receive it the right way. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in these things. Jesus said most of the time, you know, you're by your, your faith has made you whole. Right? So, well, if the person didn't have enough faith, well, then they couldn't get healed, obviously. But that person got healed and all those other people didn't. Why? It's not God's will. No, it's God's will for everyone to be healed. Fasting will get people healed where other people, where other methods have failed. Are you hearing this? I know, well, that's why I don't like this part of the gospel. Well, this is a part of the gospel that should be good news to people who've, who've been struggling with something and they haven't gotten delivered from it because uh, this it's already built there. It's already part of God's method. Let's look at that. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So here we have God choosing something, but he chose the fast to accomplish something. And then let's look down at verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth. Spring forth means it's coming from the inside. You see, your health shall spring forth. It's different than your health shall jump on you like a bear in the woods. He could have said that. He didn't. He said that your health will spring forth. From what? From you fasting, your health will spring forth. Speedily. Thine health shall spring forth speedily. See, now a lot of people will uh, go on year after year after year under the medical advice of doctors, and they will... Uh, will uh, perpetuate a sickness and with a lot of symptoms and deal with it and try to make them comfortable for years and years and years and years and years and years. And people just tolerate it because, because they can, I guess, or, or because they think, hey, well, this is just what my, my deal in life and, and maybe God doesn't want to heal me because I went to that healing meeting and nothing happened. Hey, oh, it's my lot in life, so this is what I got. So they go on year after year after year. Here he says, your health will spring, spring forth speedily. Your health will spring forth speedily if you will fast. If you don't fast, you go on and on and on. And we've seen this over and over again, documented, medically documented, clinically documented. The people who go on a 10 14, 21 day fast and were delivered from serious illnesses that medical science had no effect on. Costing them thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. That's speedily, by the way. If you, if, oh, oh, two weeks. Two weeks is speedily. My goodness, you know, most medications, you go, well, your symptoms will clear up in six to nine months of taking this pill every day that costs you $50 a day. In six to nine months, 80% of your symptoms of that sickness will dissipate. But you will have dry mouth and you'll wet your pants a lot. You read the stuff on the TV. You see it. I'm not lying. 
Anyway, so this is the fast that I've chosen. So don't get mad at me because I'm saying that you should fast. I'm the preacher and I'm preaching what the word says. And I'm telling you that God told me just today, he said fasting will get people healed. Well, if fasting will get people healed, it's part of the gospel that we need to preach because a lot of people aren't getting healed by the laying on of hands. A lot of people aren't getting healed just by the faith and confession. A lot of people aren't getting healed by getting to the right meeting so some faith preacher can lay their hands on them, getting in the right line. I was, I was almost disgusted the last time I went to a healing meeting. Most of these people are all supposed to be faith believers and he called for yeah, anybody need any have any healing that they need in their body and the whole church goes up to the front what is that all about this is what that's all about we're leaving a part of the gospel out that needs to be preached this is the fast that i have chosen there's something about fasting that will cause health to spring forth can you see that out of those verses of scripture that I read. This is the fast that I've chosen. Thine health shall spring forth speedily. So there's something about a fast when you're in it doing it that will cause your health to spring forth. Scripture. Get mad at the Bible. It can take it. So my question here is do we believe that God wants people healed? I'll just list off a name of a few diseases here. Does God want people to be healed of high blood pressure? Does God want people to be healed from coronary heart disease? Yes. Does God want people to be healed from tumors? Does God want people to be healed from arthritis? Does God want people to be healed from lupus or Crohn's disease or Graves disease or multiple sclerosis or psoriasis or varicose veins. Now this is a short list. Here's the real question. Do we believe God wants people to be healed of these diseases, all of which are proven clinically by doctors who've embraced fasting as a method of treatment, medically supervised, meaning these people sign up and go to a place where the doctor can watch them, monitor them. They don't go anywhere. They don't eat anything. They bring them water. They take their blood pressure. They take blood samples. They do all the stuff the doctors do, except give them medication and they watch them, all their vital signs, for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks, whatever the prescribed length of time is for that particular disease. Some diseases take longer than others. Do we believe God wants people to be healed of these diseases that, if, that fasting has literally cured them of? Because none of those other diseases people ever get cured of. They just get maintenance by medicine, expensive medicine, medically supervised, clinical tested, documented and circulated and published in medical journals, high blood pressure. Do we believe God wants those people to be healed of high blood pressure? These clinicians, these doctors have proven this one case I was reading of, he took 200 people, 200 that had high blood pressure and were on high blood pressure medication. And he fasted them. I think it was for 14 days. Every single one of them was brought down to normal blood pressure levels and they could remove their medications. We're no longer on medications. 100%. Every single one of them documented, proven. What did that? Fasting. He wasn't even doing it as a Christian or a believer. He was employing the method that God chose and their health sprung forth. 
High blood pressure normalized by the vehicle of fasting. Atherosclerosis, which is plaque building up in the arteries, which is a precursor to a heart attack. The artery, it gets plaque on the inside of the artery, right, in there, and it gets smaller and smaller, and pretty soon the heart is part of why high blood pressure goes up. Well, isn't it, well, wouldn't you think that if the high blood pressure went down to normal levels, then something had to happen to the arteries. What happened was through the fasting process, all those arteries were cleaned out. It fixed it. They didn't have to go to the doctor and pay tens of thousands of dollars to have them scrape out their arteries or put in some little balloon or something to puff it up so they could. Are you getting this? God has a method where what by you don't have to go and pay tens of thousands of dollars. More than that, I'm sure. Probably like $50,000 to go be admitted for some kind of heart care. Coronary heart disease right now, 610,000 people die every year in the United States, every year from coronary heart disease. If they have coronary heart disease and they know about it, what are the doctors doing? Are the doctors prescribing? No, they're prescribing high blood pressure medication to lower their blood pressure and they're prescribing, oh, you know, cholesterol lowering things. Most of them will, after the fact, say you need to change your diet and stop eating so much butter and dead animals. But the first thing they do, the first thing they do is prescribe medication. When published in their own medical journals, which they've chosen to ignore, is to get that person to go fast and get rid of the coronary heart disease and the high blood pressure and the plaque buildup. Through fasting, high blood pressure is normalized. Plaque buildup is dissipated. Tumors are metabolized. Is that good? Tumors, people with some kind of tumor, it gets eaten up by the body itself. Scar tissue, arthritic deposits dissolve. All autoimmune disorders are fixed and healed. These are documented by doctors. Rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, inflammatory bowel disease. You seen commercials on that? Who's making money off inflammatory bowel disease? Now the doctors and the, the medical companies, yeah. How about the people making commercials for it? They're all making money off of it. They're all making money off a disease that doesn't need to even be in anybody's body. Crohn's disease, Graves disease, multiple sclerosis, which is the immune system attacking nerve cells. It'll stop doing that. Wouldn't that be good? Psoriasis and all other skin diseases, eczema, <clears throat> varicose veins. I've prayed for people with var varicose veins before. Sometimes they're healed. Sometimes they're not. This is not a sometimes thing. This is something that works for everybody, anywhere, all the time. Addictions leave. Things just leave. You're like, what happened to it? I kind of, kind of like that. Well, it's gone. Sins lose hold and power over you. Oppressions, things that have oppressed you for days and weeks and months, they just leave. They go away. How is that? Because God chose this method. He even specifically says that. The oppressed go free. Every yoke, every yoke is broken. If someone came to your healing meeting and got delivered from addictions, I don't care what the addiction was, right? Wouldn't we call that a miracle? Yet God has a method by which everybody can be delivered from addictions. The addictions leave. And we don't preach it. 
Why? Because people get, I mean, those doctors who did these clinical, it took them years to try to get it even accepted into these medical journals because they, everybody wants to call that wacko. Everybody wants to call that a flake. But it's something God has chosen. God chooses the weak things to confound the mighty. We do all these mighty things and have no success in healing these diseases, just suppressing the disease or the symptoms. But you had success in fasting them for two weeks and their health sprang forth speedily. We got to suppress that. My point here is if somebody fasts for a few weeks and all of a sudden they're delivered from an addiction, that's a miracle. That's no less a miracle. It's God doing it. But God, they happen to touch onto something that God built into every person that's available to everyone, whosoever will. We all like to say whosoever will. We don't always embrace whosoever will. And you'll see people that are obviously not even believers or Christians and don't believe anything about the Bible. And yet they'll go and they'll employ fasting and they'll get healed and delivered and set free from certain things. It's wonderful because God put it there. In my estimation as a healing preacher, if I don't preach this side of healing, then I haven't preached all the good news. It's why I'm taking the time to methodically go through this series and to lay it out there. It's not something I felt like I could do on a Sunday morning, but it's something that I felt that I needed to put out there. One of the great things about the internet is now if people are interested or they're led in that direction, they'll be able to go here and get some good faith preaching on fasting. You see, because this is the method God chose and God is no respecter of persons. The way you choose what you, God chose a method and when you choose that method, you line yourself up with God's will that he already chose and you get the benefits of it. Fasting is not comfortable. I'm not telling you that it is. It's not fun all the time. It's not that enjoyable. But it is effective and it is a way to get healed. Some things take longer than others to leave. Certain sicknesses take longer. They're farther embedded and deeper into your system. So it takes your system longer time to push it out. But none of those sicknesses are the will of God, ever. It will seem miraculous when the thing leaves because you're touching a thing that God built into your system from the very beginning, from the book of Genesis. God built it into your system. And that's what you're touching on. That's why it is miraculous. We like to talk about whosoever will, but whosoever will can access the power of God built into them from the beginning by God and get healed. <laughs>